happening people of the world welcome to episode 23 of the whiskey and wade show today we have a very very special guest former amateur champion boxer numerous national titles four nations champion captain of country boxing international all around the world turned play red screen red director producer award-winning actor <laughs> activist <laughs> The one and only, John Connors. What a man. Not a Thanks man. For Thanks for being here. For I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. Actually, the last time I saw you was my fate. Which, um, which one was that? Odyssey. Man? I got a picture of you and everybody. Was was like, Johnny Connors is here. That, uh, was that on the front, Frampton? The Frampton? I think it might have been. Uh, Frampton and, and uh, was it the, the, the were you up Fili Filipino one? Or? No, were you up at Brunettes? Yeah. I was uh, like, I was yeah, Brunettes. That's what, yeah, yeah. Jesus. I think. Bernard, 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 Irish, Irish ever uh, he could have like he could have went beyond Frampton even so good. I've, I've said that on this podcast and I say it all the time you know I was horrified the greatest yeah. boxer to ever come out of here but you know potentially he could have been he could have been yeah man yeah. I don't know but you you were unbelievable as a, a boxer back in the day as well yeah won the watch yeah. you were yeah he was winning <laughs> fucking everything yeah yeah well I was I mean this man used to spar a lot didn't yeah. he the Irish yeah. team uh, I got a, a baptism of fire when yeah. I first <laughs> when I first won the title well, one poignant yeah. moment that I remember clear as day with Johnny Connor because you were crazy back in the day if you don't I remember. know yeah I know I was and yeah. you were absolutely hammering Stephen Ward I must have been winning by about 18 points yeah and then next time you just heard Stephen Ward by like, 13 ah! points I beat him <laughs> you beat him yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, back I, was winning, I was winning by 13 points and you know what was so disgusting about it was it would have been me fourth all Ireland in a row and I would have beaten the club record and the club record was held by my one of my trainers, Joe Lawler, who was an Olympian. Fuck. So I would have fucking beaten that record, you know. Why did uh, you do it? Uh, self destruction. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was it was an easy pace. You know, like bro. now at yeah, I was with thirteen points up. You were well, uh, well. with uh, three three seconds to go. And you said fuck it. Uh, do you know what, man? <laughs> <laughs> I know we're laughing. We're laughing now, right? But it only it, it would have like I it only it took me years to even. Even deconstruct way, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I was losing the head outside yeah. of outside of boxing. Right. I was like trauma was catching up to me. Yeah. I was street fighting, mm. not bare knuckle in the travel side of thing in Darndale street fighting, doing a lot of fighting stuff, and um, I was I was full of rage. And I was like, yeah. fuck this box. I was, shit. I was hurt, hurt, scurdy, and I was yeah. doing the ear. I was like, fuck this box. That bit when you bet him, right? You fucking got disqualified yeah. as you should have yeah. got But I remember, can you remember? They uh, started threatening the fucking ref. <laughs> I think it was, the ref, what yeah. do you call him? Mungan? The ref, no, no, it wasn't, wasn't wrong. It, at t no, it wasn't. There was someone I had no... You were threatening the man. There was someone else. I was threatening the man. <laughs> yeah, no. You were swearing on everything. You're no, dead. no. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I get to website, you're getting it. Uh, no, I lost that plot, boys. Yeah. And then what's funny then, the month after... We, you'll remember this the month after then actually they still selected me to fight for we went to Azerbaijan Azerbaijan yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. fought Keith Happy who was Did world you him? Him? he went on to be world amateur champion yeah, I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't and he was actually already world he was world fucking new champion but I didn't know it thank god going we, in we didn't know anything did, did you beat him no, did you beat yeah. him no no nah. I didn't beat him no 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 he, me this, but, he, but it was an he, all action fight like all yeah. action and then after he knocked everybody out he stopped everybody else out he stopped yeah. everybody else, you including were, the European champion. You were very, very, yeah. very tall to back in the yeah. day. Yeah. And then you just stopped, just cut it out. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. Like, like as I said, like the life Lost outside him. of the ring mm. kind of caught up with me and the stuff that I was doing in Darndale. And I got very depressed. And I didn't really know why. Like, you know what mm. I mean? Like, I couldn't understand what was happening. Uh, but then, you know, if you look at it now, and the, the, the reason I got into boxing in the first place was all because I was getting bullied anyway. Mm. And that bullying was down to my father dying. Uh, through suicide yeah. Yeah. that's the first time I actually said it in a while not, not killing himself but um, so I got into boxing to fight against all that because I was getting bullied by a lot of travellers what age was that at? like he died when I was 8 but I didn't get into boxing until 12 but I would have been boxing around the site for a few years yeah. would be cousins and whatever and then you just had to fight every day on the way to school and every day in the home you'd fight travellers like because I lived in the site with about a thousand travellers like it was a rough spot in Kilwalk yeah. so you'd fight just on the way to school on the way home in school with settled kids and it was every day getting black eyes. Yeah. And it was just like constant. That's cold that you're getting yeah. bullied because your daddy committed suicide. Yeah, yeah, because it was. It was Is so that the reason you were getting? Yeah, a lot of the time, a lot of the time it was getting bullied 
that would be the thing they'd use against you. But with travellers, it's like if you don't have a father that defends yourself, no. you're seen as an innocent boy, yeah. a wally, a fool, or whatever, you know, a gomi boy, they'd say, because you don't have a man to show you the man's way. And then, say, older lads or like late teens or even adults, mm. they would take advantage of you then. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. slap you around and bully you, do this and do that. And you'd be afraid to tell anybody. So that'd be going on. And then you go to school and you get the knacker and pikey stuff and we were segregated, mm-hmm. put in an all travel class. And I wasn't brought up in Alabama in the 1950s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was brought up in the early 2000s yeah. at that time. Yeah. So all that stuff, like, yeah, that brought me to boxing. And then I, I joined boxing. And I remember I went to the first night, Darnda Box Club. And Darnda was a great club, especially that time. And uh, me, Patrick Gavin and Terence Gavin, two lads I grew up with, we went up to the club and, and he says, Joe Lawler, Joe Russell, our old school trailer, he says, this is your first night your last night. When you finish the night, get your coat and get the fuck out of this club. And More I'm discrimination. Yeah, yeah, you know, sick. But I, <laughs> no, no, do you know what I was, He was just testing you, yeah, but yeah, it was fucking some serious test. But he, he sent us all out, so we went jogging. And I was a little fucking chubby cunt. But I said, I'm just going to try hard. Like So I, I always yeah. had that in my head. I was always a hard tryer. So I came back and then at the end of the night he came over and he says, you can come back. You used to fuck off to my two mates. So then I, I just started. Did they, did they yeah. not come back? No, they never came back. And we hadn't won in All-Ireland in four years at the time. Darndale was a great club in the 80s and then gone. And then yeah. it, it's my goal. The club, it comes always spells, doing that. Yeah. So then when I, came, when I won, I was the first then to win in four years winning All-Ireland. I won a Dublin, the Leagues, the Leinster's and All-Ireland within yeah. my first six months of boxing. Within six months I just joined the club and won all them. And then we then all of us start winning. Weird, like yeah. the uh, success, we, great yeah, success. Yeah, and then we yeah, had like ten, we had ten champions in the next yeah. year, thirty Dublin champions. And then the next year, I did the same again, and I went to the Four Nations and I lost, and I fucking uh, killed me losing. Like it was my first loss against a Welsh fella. I lost like nine kilos the week of the fight, and I was only like thirteen or something. Fuck and me. I got on the scales. I remember I was, Jason Quigley was there, I was boxing with him. Loads of the lads who went on to be pro and senior champions would have been on the team. And I remember, uh, I remember like fainting on the scales, and then I, I ate, I ate some beans, and I got sick. It was in yeah. Liverpool. It was, I got sick, and I couldn't eat even by the time the fight came around. So I fought your man that night, and never forget his name, Kieran, uh, Kieran Welsh from Wales, mm. and he beat me, and I fucking was all man. I was, it was like, oh, I was a psychopath. <laughs> I, 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 I went home. I went home, and um, I, I straight away went home, and I trained three times, three times that day when I got home. I just went like mental. I uh. built a gym from brick. I built a gym in the camp where I was living. Uh. And I lived in that gym then. I just okay. lived in like me and me my cousin Fraggle would just go in, ah, it's three in the morning, let's go and do a session. Like we'd just up we'd already have the training three times that day, it's three in the morning, then we put on a five pound speaker, rock. No wonder you're fucking pattern and yeah. everyone fucks it. Yeah, so that was a, a, just psychopathic kind of work ethic, you know. But I'm following you. Sorry, you won the gold, was that won the gold, yeah. When I went with you, you yeah. yeah, you're lucky, Char. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's <laughs> why me and you, Con Sheehan, John Geneva, and Horse Con, loads of lot of well, You were there, no? Don nah. Cruz. Darren yeah. Cruz, that's right, yeah. Why was there? That's a step that the fell in the second round. That was the year when you started the I, film, I, and I, think, I think you could be in the film. Look at how times change. Yeah. You're the actor now, and I'm the boxer. You were really light. You were really light. You were yeah. Like, what well, were you, 38, 9 kilos or something? Yeah, that's exactly right. 30, 30, 30, 40, 42 or something. <laughs> but you were saying there about, like, when you went to school, there was a lot of. Everyone getting out of griefing you and stuff mm. from, from where you're from. But I always think in boxing, I think that's where well, it's a great place because I think that's all left at the door. Yeah. Racism. Yeah, it is. Uh, being a traveller. Yeah. Where you're from, who you are, what colour your skin is and stuff like that. And I always think it's great. That's why that I know boxing. camaraderie, yeah. 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 Even like we were talking on the way here, but in primary school, there was always like a stigma. Or I don't know if stigma is the right word, but there was like a myth that the travellers are all mad they're going to be the jumped they're going to be the gypsies are all mad they're all going to bother you I was, I was hard because I lived in the city the gypsy camp yeah, like, yeah. not far and he used to come in and he used to be like fuck I had to feed yeah we had to feed them when we were kids yeah, we're like yeah. fuck we had to feed them yeah, yeah. we fuck we had to, they, Ed was so afraid of walking past the Glen Road <laughs> they're my cousins the Glen Road I know I know yeah, the dunny was, yeah. I used to be like <laughs> <and> alright <laughs> lads but then when you started boxing when you started boxing you integrate and you're like and then you become friends but like you know lads it's a weird it's a weird travelers. it's a weird thing though like if you consider the traveller population of Ireland right, travellers make up less than zero le, less than one percent so it's zero point six percent 
of the population of Ireland. Mm. Yet they make up around 50% of the underage All Ireland champions. Yeah. And 30 to 40% of even with a senior. Yeah. Like, that's an unbelievable it's statistic. Crazy. Now, it's even more unbelievable when you consider that Ireland, as an amateur boxing country, rank in the top 10 yeah. every year. Can, and, uh, and Ireland in the top 10 are the smallest country in a ratio of 10 to 1. So every other country in the top 10 is 10 times the population of Ireland, a minimum. Yeah, and then Smart travers have that within. Yeah. So it's fun. It's it just goes to show the culture, uh, and 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 how sacred fighting is, but yeah. also how that the discrimination, that inner conflict, that all that stuff that Breaking does harden you, yeah. and it causes bad shit too. Of but course, I mean, yeah. it kind of works kind yeah. of both ways, you know. And even you know who's the the main man in in world boxing today? Tyson Fury, mm. Irish yeah. traveler background. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. So Come here. Do you ever remember going to Azerbaijan? Do you remember Michael Mongan? Yeah, yeah. He I, was I like, can't remember Michael. He landed about his wage. He was fucking unbelievable, lads. He was, lads. Lads. He was, he was fucking, lads. Lads. He was he was fucking lads. He was one of the most talented like hell I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah, like he was doing. Like I remember watching him, and he was real short for the weight, always real yeah, stocky. Okay. But I remember watching him, and he was throwing body shots like an advanced pro yeah. at fifteen, fourteen, class. like whipping them in, and he was a like, killer. And I remember we went away. And as was John that time, and, and like we we didn't really know nothing, but you think you were thinking if you get John a Russian in your day, and yeah. if you get John an American in your day, <laughs> you know, we were having these guys. Yeah. But I remember my, I don't give a fuck, Michael. <laughs> Jimmy, Michael, he didn't give a shit. He was drinking vodka and going in fighting, uh, and, and he still won two fights. So he had hangovers. He used to stop everyone. He got a bronze game. medal, and he and he was drinking every night, and he was 15. <laughs> I was like, Michael, if you put the bottle down for one night, <laughs> for one night, you probably get us a gold medal, man. It was, it was the World Cup, like the presence world Cup, America. Top 16 he was, he was so The top 16 He was so yeah. talented well, And we were drinking then Do you remember we lost So we said we put the Do you remember the Ger- Do you remember we woke up The Germans Do you remember that yeah. We woke the Germans up And the Germans complained about us Then that all was like World War II <laughs> I, th- I think I put a bottle Through the German you door think, You threw a fucking bottle Out the window uh, Yeah and the window smashed and, smashed, and, smashed, yeah. and they were able to pinpoint what yeah. was, and and me, all, me and Michael uh, were, were punching the Germans doors And then they are coming Stein 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 I got back And I think that They wanted to ban me or something from the IABA uh, under the family. What the happened day. to him? What happened to him? Hey, traveller. Yeah, <laughs> got married. Well, got yeah, married. Right. You know, kebabs, <laughs> jail. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, well, I was, remember my dad as a raised arms from... He said, over here... The, they call kebabs jabs, and I fucking believed it. That's the way It's called jabs. <laughs> you know the thing. Get the jabs. Oh, you told me last week. Ah, get the jabs. We want to eat talking about your fucking. He's still going to face the jabs. That was fucking. That was some fucking mad experience going to a country like that at that know. age, wasn't it? Like, it was. And crazy. we were in like such a rundown part of the country. Mm, yeah. Like if you see other places on on TV. Nah, it's just so much wealth. Yeah, it was run down. It was like well, fucking we Ballymun and steroids. Yeah. Like. I think anywhere you go on boxing trips, yeah. but they're always the run down areas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mark really McCullough was with Mark us. Mark McCullough, oh, Rory O'Donoghue. Uh, Anthony, um, what do you call him from North uh, Belfast? He was Anthony McDonald? Yeah. Or he was yeah. very good, like yeah. Sir Paul. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Rory O'Donoghue then, yeah. Me, me and Megan Mungan was in, in the room. Mark McCullough, who, Mark McCullough was, he, the, Mark McCullough was uh, karate world champion. Yeah, wasn't he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, going into it, I remember. He was only boxing a year or two with the Tony Mark. was a was karate. Was he was right? fucking really good, so Mark good, McCullough. Yeah. Fuck me, like. Yeah, but, so then you got, got into boxing, you, you finished boxing, mm-hmm. and when did you start thinking, let's get into acting acting yeah. well it was th- th- around the time of fighting with Stephen Ward was when my head was kind of unraveling yeah. you know and after that um, I, and then I did the fucking Azerbaijan thing or whatever um, and then I, actually I think I remember doing a training camp after that and I got kicked uh, from Garmerstown training camp Garmerstown I, I didn't go there was, but I was like you get kicked from it was all mine uh, <laughs> I was pranks I was doing pranks and all it was like uh, <laughs> I was going into other boxers' uh, rooms and, and that's and, standard. And, and I was just pouring bottles of water over all their clothes and all. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I think I did it three or four times. Back, a, a big file. Was it Arn? Aaron, yeah. And you were torturing He was my club mate. <laughs> but the thing is, Aaron was my Aaron was my club mate who I grew up with. Yeah. So we were doing these pranks. I was doing them on him, right? But anyway, <laughs> anyway, he sent me home. But I was just going mad. So then I actually went home, remember me trying to give it out to be over dinner with Aaron and this, that and the other. So I was just fucking, yeah. I was got involved and stuff back in Irondale and, and people saw me as someone who could handle himself and had a yeah. bit of brain so I was a, I was of good use to certain people mm. and certain elements so that sent me down a mad road and I wouldn't even get into that, some of that stuff that's for the book one day when I die <laughs> but uh, but that sent me down that, that kind of road and then I, like one day it kind of just all hit me and, and I was like what the fuck am I doing with my life like and start feeling guilt and shame and 
mm. and realizing where all this stuff has come from. And honestly, I just got really badly depressed. Did somebody you know, like, say something to live for you, like, for you to go, fuck, hang on, I'm being a bit of a cunt here, or did you just leave mother, yourself? The my mother, you? yeah, yeah, she, she found out that I was doing... To be honest with you, what she found out that I was doing was probably 10% of what I was doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but she sat me down and she was crying. And, and the thing is, I remember, like, I remember when my father died, she would cry and I'd hear her cry for, like, you know, because we're living on the same trailer. So I remember her cry being, like, the worst sound I ever heard. Yeah. You know, that kind of way. So then when she cried to me and asked me to stop what I was doing, I stopped and it was like a moment of realisation. And then all the other emotions are coming in guilt and shame and then going, where the fuck is all, all this come from? And will I go back to box or not? And mm. then I went back. I remember going to Crumlin and, and I was going to go pro with Phil, Phil Suckliffe. This was at 19, 20. And uh, I was sparring a lot of pros. I got the weight down at the time and doing, doing pretty well. Could have could have done it. And then um, I broke my ankle, I remember, uh, playing football. Mm. And that was a good thing that ended up happening. And I was just, like, really depressed. And... Uh, I said to myself I was going to kill myself that I planned to kill myself and the moment I planned to kill myself I was in my room in Darndale in a little box room the door knocked and my brother Joe walked in and he said are you going to kill yourself? She just found to be said that? Yeah. Is this thing good fucking what do you call that? Spiritual fucking in the yeah. ransom? Serendipity probably you know so when I was a kid eight years of age I walked out to the field one day and I could hear my father call me John oh John where are you son where are you? And uh, I went over to my mommy and I says, Mommy, I said, Daddy's calling me for the last 10 minutes. Where is he? And she didn't say where he was. She knew where he was. He was supposed to be in a mental hospital at the time. Now, he tried to kill himself loads of times. I caught him doing it and all this stuff. We saved him. So an hour later then, I'm sitting eating the food and two guards walk in and they said, we found John in the river. He's been there a couple of days. So he was dead a few days. So but whatever that him, whatever that yeah. was, that serendipity thing there, that's what that was when we were a job. Did you ever find out like what was your father's demons? Like what was driving him? He know, was schizophrenic. Like, okay. He was schizophrenic, so like uh, uh, like one the one of the reasons I'm born in London by is 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 because of his schizophrenia. As a, my brothers would never like talking about me winning the four nays, when I won the four nays and I came back and my two brothers were born in Dublin and I showed them the the DVD and put on the DVD for them. I wish I had the DVD now to go. Show them the DVD and I was like, yeah, yeah, me and me with the Irish last and and winning and, and, and K O an English fella as well. Yeah. And KO Did he? Yeah, yeah. Right. Broke his ribs and all. <laughs> and proper KO. And he says, you, you should be fighting for Great Britain. So I always had that that chip on my shoulder. Do you know what I mean? That uh, the same chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All the yeah. Time. But you were born, you were born there as well. London as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Both from Britain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be so, smack me, lads. So Don't always, late. always, always. That was a thing I always had to prove. Actually, yeah. you know, like that. And you know yourself, even with being mixed race as well. Yeah. It's the travel thing. We've a lot in common, yeah. you know, like that kind of dual identity yeah. and being extra proud, proud Irish. You know. Well, it goes two ways. You could either. I always say it's like when you're sticking out, you can own it and be proud of it, mm. or you can try and shy away and go like in my case, I could have went. Oh no, I'm, you know. My daddy's wet and you no know, yeah. like trying to assimilate, yeah, yeah, but yeah. instead I was like, No, I am black and yeah. I'm black Tommy yeah. whatever and grow my hair it. Do you know, you know like, so I remember just a, a bit off topic. I remember go, I was, had a Jamaican girlfriend, Jamaican Irish girlfriend, she was half Jamaican, half Irish, and she absolutely resented her blackness. Really? Like she was fucking racist. Like to the, like That's crazy. Was, the only way I can describe her, she was the exact she was like, imagine from Darndale, right? And I uh, should have said that, but anyway, she was like, uh, she was like, uh, she was like, uh, she was a Darndale Rihanna, right? Do you know, like, and I remember it was what I was in the Dar I was in Darndale one day, I was up there, <laughs> the Darndale Rihanna, Darndale. What a that's what she was like, you know, <laughs> I was in the patch in Darndale, the patch is like where all the match up and down, all the drugs went down, or whatever. And she was, she, it was a summer's day, and I remember she walking down with a pair of shorts on her, like, there to there, you know, and I went, what the fuck, <laughs> and I said, boys, back in a second. <laughs> I just walk. I said, "Who are you?" And said, "I'm not gonna say now." I'm blah blah. blah. What do you want? I said, "Where are you going?" Um, and she, she said, "Going to chip room." And I said, "She said, where are you going?'" I said, "I'm going with you." And I said, "Ah, nah, that's funny. That's funny." I said, well, "I'm just telling you, I'm in love with you, like." And she's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, I don't know what. I'm just at the scene, yeah. Well, I don't know what the story. I need to get your phone. I'm not leaving you, basically." What's and your MSM? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or your people? People. <laughs> so yeah, but I remember her saw. So she was a fucking cracker, but she's. It's like she was real racist against herself. That's crazy. Yeah. And I've met travellers like that as well. Yeah, the self hate. Yeah. Self hate. Yeah, it's it's self an internal. It's from the shame. They internalize that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, back to that. So 
the the brother came in serendipity blah 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 and they said look he said you need to find something new and uh he said uh why did I act and oh first actually why, said, why did he just run was it just random he well, said well the, the, the reason you? well he actually said to me first uh please don't kill yourself because we can't afford to bury you <laughs> 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 and like he Fair wasn't enough. joking like he was ashamed of his life especially travelers we're real proud with money and all so like oh he'd said jeez we've no money to bury you that'd be a bad thing like uh, you know okay. so anyway i laughed and I, so <laughs> he said he said acting because I love that. I love them, um, the films. Yeah. And I had, like, I, I'm, all my friends would be, you know, before Google, they'd be ringing me, who's in this film? Who's like an encyclopedia right. of knowledge of uh, particularly oh, the stuff that I like? Yeah. yeah. Going right back to the 30s, James Cagney stuff, all the way up. Like, I love every, every kind of, every decade of film. Mm. But, um, so he's, he, all I did was when I was depressed was basically be in my room watching The Sopranos. Right, but I think I wanted to be Tony Soprano at one point, drinking yes. wine and making me own lasagna from scratch. Is that That sounds yeah. like a perfect day. Yeah. Lasagna, yeah. wine, and Soprano. I want and to then, get depressed now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the fucking depressed gun. Like. So, um, uh, so then I go to the, the only other place I'd leave is to go to the cinema, and uh, um, I'd go to the cinema and I'd just use me, I'd spend whatever dole I had. Like the only, I'd leave, I got like 188 euro every week in my dole, and I'd only leave to go to the cinema or to go into Dublin city centre into Laser which was a great place for kind of independent cinema, European cinema, world cinema, and buy DVDs. That's mm-hmm. all I'd spend my money on. And like the day after my doll, I was broke. Like, and I, like, cause just I'd loads of movies? You just like, buy loads of DVDs and I yeah. would have went to the cinema twice that day or three times that day. And I'd go and watch anything. Like, I'd watch Sex in the City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember going to watch Sex in the City and I was there by myself. Yeah. And, I, and I was the first thing, as I always was, because I loved that 15 minutes before even the ad start. So yeah. I'd go in early. And I looked in front of me and I counted 87 people or whatever in front of me and they're all women you know what I mean so I didn't care it was that escapism yeah. you know? and that was all associated to me father when I was a kid because he brought me to the cinema that was yeah. our thing to do yeah. okay. and he introduced me to all the films that I end up loving and now my favourite like the Rage and Bulls and Scarfaces yeah. and Scorsese stuff and yeah. you know all that kind of stuff so um, he said look why don't you try acting you know I forget. he said look the boxing you know he said you, you've lost your love for it you know fuck that uh, start a different dream and I just said fuck it I'll go for it so I rang up like uh, Kathleen Warner Yates, who was, uh, she had this place called um, the Abbey School of Drama and Music, and it was on Abbey Street. No connection mm. to uh, the Abbey Theatre, mm. which they were very clear about. <laughs> it was on Abbey Street, you know. So I said, look, I'd like to do an acting class or whatever. And she, she was on the other end of the phone. Oh, yeah, have you ever acted before? And I went, no. And she said, well, there's an adult for fun class. And I, I said, no, that doesn't really sound like what I want. I knew I needed something more tense, you know what I mean? Mm. I said, anything else? And she said, uh, Ad, ad, there's an advanced scene study course but you know everybody is advanced in it and the professional actors and I said I'll do that don't know where don't know where going to be balls and it's me it's one bad. extreme like, to another you kind of were madly preparing yourself without even knowing by mm. going to the cinema all the time watching DVDs of all the, different downloading information and and like, that's what that is even the yeah. uh, the way you grew up, you've been in every situation so you can you can yeah. express that in every yeah. kind of role so absolutely yeah um, yeah, you were advanced, you had an advanced life, it seems. Yeah, no, it helped, like, definitely, like, with acting, it's about the well, what's inside you, what can yeah. you bring out emotionally. Uh, and I was definitely in, like, a lot of kind of mad situations, violent situations, mm. life or death situations, nearly died a few times. Yes. And I've been around scary people and understand how to control myself as well, around mm. these people as well. And then, you know, acting just kind of, it came in, it was, like, natural. Well, I think yeah, you said, I seen you said uh, it was very, very hard for you to get a, an agent. Well, look, I, I still don't. I still don't have an agent now. Like, I'm, do you not? Like, I'm 33 January gone, and I'd say there's probably no actor in Ireland my age that has has more say credits on IMDb than me. Uh, I had one, and if the uh, for acting, I nominated as well. Won one for yeah, documentary, yeah, won awards won. everywhere, and I couldn't get an agent, even a shite agent. Well, like up until a couple of years ago, I haven't even tried in the last couple of years. You don't I, set up, I set up my own company yeah. and with Aaron yeah. and But and still, it just shows, goes to show you that the, the friggin' the discrimination yeah, was well, still kind of in the dark. It's especially yeah. in Ireland trying to be yeah. super progressive all the time. But yeah, sure, yeah. The fucking <laughs> no, but you know, no, like, I know, I know, yeah. But, but like when it comes to the there's, there's, it, that's you where can't get an agent. Yeah, you're the top actor in the fucking. But you know, like even stuff, and believe me, Tommy, I've done myself no favors as well, because like I, you know, first of all, representing travelers as the mouthpiece is not a, is not good for your career. Like not just the discriminatory factor. 
but being known as the spokesperson doesn't help. Do you know mm. what I mean? And then also getting involved in anything politically. Like I'd be very, I'd been very known for my Republican beliefs and being very loud about it. Going on the late late show when there was the hundred and six, the the nineteen sixteen rising anniversary, and I start talking about the thirty fifth year anniversary of the nineteen eighty one hunger strikes. Yeah. So these kind of things don't help you either. Yeah. So it's a, it's all this like, but like you'd look at some of these agencies and they'd have you know someone on the books that maybe had one line in one film. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm going, and I'm, hang on, I can't get representation. And, and for all that, it's just as me in, in boxing. I've been pro for 12, 12 years, 13 years maybe. Mm. And I've never had a, a promoter, ever. It's madness. And like, you see these boxers in England or wherever, yeah. and they're all 1-0, 2-0. Mm. Yeah. And I've, I've been world well, level. it's political. Yeah, yeah, it's political. That's the thing. You know what you I know. mean? And it's like, you either learn how to play the game or you do it your own way. And I've done it my own way against, yep. you know, it's been hard. It's been fucking rough. But I, I said the trammers all the time. I said the working class people when I meet them when they're complaining about discrimination, because you know that's the thing we don't talk about enough either is classism. You know, yeah. um, that's the one thing they always wanted. Because cla- when you say classism, what you're doing is you're ad- you're identifying a, you're identifying a problem with society, and the problem is that there's an economic gap. So someone has economic privilege, and the up- middle and upper classes don't want you talking about economic privilege. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they actually don't. That's the last one they'll even talk about nowadays. So. When all these factors come into it, I mean, you know, it's just it's hard for people to to want to cash there, want to work with you and all that. So I, I just did my own thing, and it's hard, but it, ge- it gives you the we're gonna yeah. Do. But if, it, like a, if you have a kind of a if you have a bigger fucking barrier to jump over than somebody else, that means you'll be stronger when you jump over it. That's what mm-hmm. I say to travelers mm-hmm. and working class kids when they do all these school talks. Yeah, is that yeah? Is there going to be more barriers? Yeah, but if you manage to jump over them, you will be better mm-hmm. than your counterpart who has the economic yeah. privilege. So you had the you. Got the started acting, went to acting school. When did you start thinking I'm going to start writing stuff and, and getting into that kind of then? Or did you start doing having some parts in films and then progress? The- well, you know, man, it's mad. Like, despite the fact that I had fucking, you know, in school some bad experiences with teachers and segregation and that, like, I got desegregated because my, it, I said it to me mother. After like a couple of months in this stupid traveler class, in which they give you just color, was there a traveler class? Oh yeah, tra- like any, at all age. So what was customary down south was what was customary usually. It most was customary was you know when you go to second class, you do your your communion. When you go to third class, then third, fourth, and fifth, sixth class travelers all just put together one class and do what you want. As long as you just don't break Fuck the class up. Me. So that was that was just a cross. That was yes. Yeah, so that's that's what happened with us. So so we didn't tell me mother because. Um, she would have you know acted up and we said oh we're just fo- floating here for me and me brother Joe yeah. uh, but then we went well we're just not intellectually fucking um, uh, getting enough here mm. and we would have been me and Joe were very bright and my father was very bright and he taught us how to fucking read at three and four years of age with newspapers like, like so this was like fucking stupid so we said it to my mother and she went up and ki- kicked the fuss and we got out after it might have been you know I was a kid so I can't remember it might have been a couple of months we ended up getting desegregated yeah. And put into the general population. Oh, yeah. Well, the rest of no them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're on the yeah. traveler right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Away. But you know, even that stuff like would it would make you resent people yeah. and oh, resent man. settled people. Yeah. You know, but uh, well, this isn't even all that long ago. Like, I know. Said, you're only thirty three. Like, still still happening. But it's still happening. It's still happening already. Still happening. It's still happening. It's still happening. Still happening. Yeah, around Jesus Ireland. Christ. So yeah. So that was the man. It was just like some. It is what it is. It's like you get a lot of anger, and that was one of the re- all that stuff. You know, is one of the reasons why I had a meltdown in my teens and whatever. All the anger and rage of the world. No and I thought every no settled person I ever met hates me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if I think every settled person that I ever met hates me, and this settled person thinks every traveller's a scumbag, mm. when the two of them meet, nothing good can come out of it. Do you know what I mean? So I learned to drop that, my attitude, my chip, yeah. and go, hang on, if I want to be treated equally and as an individual, I also have to do the same as well. Mm. I give the settled people a chance because they, they don't hate me. You know what I mean? I don't know if they hate me. It's just you have to take it individually. Mm. That's the, bi- the biggest lesson. Because so travelers out there, they've so much fear and so much resentment for the settler community because they genuinely feel they'll never give us a chance. You know, they, mm. no matter what, you're going to be this, this, this. You know what I mean? And like, so it's always the same with travelers. Like, you know, don't hang around with them. And they all ever think is you're an acker or pikey. That's what they think. Mm. And that's coming from a place of hurt and pain and wanting mm. to protect yourself. But the reality is there's no way to live your life. Yeah, Some of my best friends are settled people. Like, my absolute best friends are like brothers to me. And we're all the one. You know, we're mm. all Irish at the end of the day. We're all human. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's what I learned. And 
art and creativity and acting and all that's what you know I learned that and go back to the thing about the writing I st- I, I believed I could write because of a good teacher who one day said to me, John, that essay was amazing. Really? He could be like a gold star. Was going <laughs> and a gold star in my forehead. I was like, no way, a gold star. And he planted the seed. So when I did my first acting class, I went up and I, I got it around in a table like this. And um, everybody w- uh, went around and said, you know, I did three years in the Gaiety and two years here and whatever. And I said, oh, fuck, what am I going to do? And I started shitting, you know, and I was thinking I need to run out of the class, you know. But I said, I'll wait and not be sussy and wait till like the acting starts and then I'll fuck out and let Nana go to the toilet. Mm. And what happened was this scene unfolded in an improvisational scene in which uh, the customer of the scenario walked outside the classroom and when he or she walked back in, he had to he, he had to go along with it being some sort of shop or bank or whatever kind of a, a, um, a monetary relationship with, with the shopkeeper, another mm. actor. And he had to improvise around that. So... The first setup was this like upper class Dublin lad, like super elite upper class, and this black Brazilian man, right? Mm. So this so the scene start unfolding in front of me. I'm looking at it and he's coming in and he's like, um, I'm looking for some vanilla protein, right? And people are getting a laugh and whatever. And then he continues on and, and he start making a laugh at this black Brazilian man. I found I it turned to me and the, for me it was racism. That's what mm. it looked like. And I remember getting so fucking angry, like I was shaking with the anger. And I imagined grabbing him and throwing him at this this second floor building, like giving him the like, genuinely, one. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie, no, would you ever have a vivid fantasy? Yeah, like, yeah. like I, you oh, know, I get them psychotic kind of. I did then, especially. So I went, "Fuck me! I want to kill this cunt!" Like it was everything I hate and mm. represents everything I hate. So he said, "Does anybody want to be the customer?" And the posh fella ends up being the the shopkeeper. So I went, "Yeah." <laughs> right, so I walked out to the class Barred from class yeah. first day <laughs> <laughs> I walked out to the class And you say You go out and you get into the character You know this, <laughs> Tom and the so, come see <laughs> 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 So I get outside right I get outside I'm outside And I'm ra- like lads I'm shaking like raging And I go What I'll do What I'll do I could run away here now You know what I mean And they won't know I'll, get, I'll have at least two minutes Before they check mm. If I'm gone You know yeah, what I mean yeah. But I was too angry So I ran through And it was down to me To choose the scenario So I turned the place into a bank and I said get down on your fucking feet mm. and I grabbed them and slapped them and slapped the face off them <laughs> took the shoes off them took the socks off them <laughs> right? and then I was halfway taking off his tracks at bottoms when the teacher came in and said John John please stop scene, scene. <laughs> <laughs> so this teacher she was an Australian Shakespearean teacher yeah? and like I'm the opposite of what she's seen she, she, you know what I mean she's looking at me like a psychopath so I, I, I said I said I'm sorry I'm sorry don't call the guards right so I, I ran out of the class and she ran after me and she shouted, John, John, come back, please. And I ran out. I said, get look on it. And went down Abbey Street, ran down and she ran after me, said, John, please come back. And I turned around and I said, what? And she said, you're fucking crazy. And I went, oh, yeah, but I like it. I said, oh, you do? Yeah. She said, listen, come back up and don't ever fucking touch my students again. I said, okay, right, God. So I walked back up and he gave me kind of a lukewarm clap. I think I would have feared. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, this is deadly. <laughs> so that was it like that. I fe- so I fell in love with it. So then that night I thought about writing. I went, mm. I'm going to write something. Straight eventually. away? You know? Yeah, yeah, I just thought it. Because you and knew lo- you could write and Yeah, and, and lo and behold, what was it about straight away? Me father. I wanted right. to write something about mental health, wanted to do it on stage. And that ended up being a film called Stalker, where I got all my ideas. And Mark O'Connor, the director who directed me in King of the Travis, my first film, um, we kind of combined our ideas, and that became a film called Stalker, which was a mental health homelessness and kind of a one of the first kind of protest films in Ireland. And the first um, online funded film was like, med- we met it on 15 grand, but mm. it did well critically in that, you know? When did, when did you start thinking, right? So you, you tried to get an acting class, but. When do you think this is actually going to go somewhere? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be an actor. Going to be yeah. At the end of that course, we did a non, we did a performance on stage, and um, I suppose the audience reaction, everybody came to me, mm-hmm. everyone like so, like the other actors f- who brought family or friends, all of them came to me like. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, did, did you bring family and friends? For I the brought, yeah, I brought me brother and me two cousins. Mm. And they just couldn't stop laughing their heads off. Like, <laughs> they were just laughing at serious bits because yeah. they were laughing at me being serious yeah. on stage. Yeah. Like I was doing a scene that was out of a play that was imitating Robert De Niro. 
the De Niro part in, in uh, Deer Hunter uh, where, he, where he puts the, the gun to his head and he goes, Moe, Moe, you know, that's it. And I was doing that. And it was real serious and everybody else was like captivated. And my cousins and my brother was like, ah, <laughs> you're a big old innocent boy. You know, but they, but they came up to me afterwards. They were like, Jesus Christ, you're like, yeah, you wasn't bad now. <laughs> like that to them is a big thing. Yeah. And then other people were coming over, fuck me, that was great. And I was like, shit, could I actually be a fucking actor? Yeah. And then I was just thinking, if like, fuck me, if I got like one line in a short film within the next couple yeah. of years, I'd be happy. Mm. And then within like two or three months of that, I went and auditioned for King of the Travellers and uh, I gave a great audition and thought, yeah, I'm going to get a part and I heard nothing for about six, seven weeks and I was like, what the fuck? Obviously, I didn't get a part. And then the director rang me up and he said, listen, I've written a part for you and you're in six or seven scenes and I was like, six or seven scenes and a feature and a film, million euro budget, what fucking happy fucking days. Mm. And then what happened was I did a rehearsal for about three months because there was a lot of travellers in it so they were non-actors so they wanted to rehearse people. So I was rehearsing for about three months and then eventually uh, the director sacked the lead who was my old boxing buddy, John Collins, and uh, gave me the lead. Powerful. And, uh, yeah, like well, serendipity. Why did he get sacked? Just um, couldn't pull it? I, I was, like, there was there was two parts of that character and the part that he couldn't get that was the darkness. Yeah, he had The it. trauma and all that. And yeah. the character's father died when he was a kid yeah. so it was so like me it was written for me yeah, you know yeah, what I mean so, mm. so that was it and he actually said when he when he was getting the sack he said I hope you give this to John Connors do you know what I mean so was, you know so Fair uh, folks, yeah serendipity yeah. takes over boys. and if you don't kind of listen to the universe you know because yeah. I was thinking everything negative yeah. and negative things happened when I started thinking positive it's all him positive shit no and it's, it's fitting that you got that role your first role as the king of the travellers because I remember when we were kids that was your ultimate late yeah. goal. I yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. It was. Don't be worried. Some of the boys. Yeah, yeah. You're the king, boys. You don't know how to say. You're 100 percent, and I, I fought bare knuckle and all that, and and. Uh, yeah, what was bare knuckle like? I, oh well, it looks I, like a scary fucking game. My fr- like loads of fight. Like I can't tell you how many fights I would have had, but loads and loads of fights. But like official fights, it's kind of different and all, you know. But I remember my first official fight I was fighting a fella who bullied me as a kid mm. and he was 22 years of age and I was 15 and he bullied did you call him out or did he call you so that's what a big ha- difference so what happened well, was amazing. so what happened was the t- him and his brother called out my two uncles right. and we, our families were having a feud and my uncles knew they weren't boxers they knew they were going to lose, mm. both of them. The sense of so what, what happened was, I stepped in and I went, I want him, yeah. right? Which was the main fella, the mm. bigger fella. And he went, no, 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 you'll never beat him. I said, I'll smash him up, <laughs> right? I was a big 15, you yeah, remember me at 15? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were 75, 80 kilos, like, yeah. well built. I was like, I'll smash, but you thought, man, I said, do you not understand? You never put on a glove, you don't know, I, these men are nothing to me. Yeah. I was just full of anger. And my grandfather came out and I, before that then what ended up happening they agreed maybe fight the younger fella and then my younger uncle's going out thinking I'm going to take a, he's going to take a loss but at least I'll beat the yeah. younger fella maybe and then my grandfather came out and says let him fight then so I ended up fighting the younger fella who was the fella who bullied me I wanted the older fella just because he was the better fighter mm. but it was sweet to beat the fella who bullied me yeah. so I went out and then I fought him I knocked him out in 40 seconds broke his jaw and then my uncle fought my uncle fought right before me he lost and then I called the fellow who beat my uncle out right there and then. I called him out. I said, that's it, one-on-one now to see whose family is actually the best. That same day? And well, straight away after, I knocked his brother out in conscience. You, you were I probably went, full of... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I said, come on. So quick. Right now. And he went, no, no, you're too young. I said, don't use that excuse. I said, uh, I will eat you up. I said, I'll murder you. I was just so much fucking anger at these guns. Because these are all the guns that bullied yeah. me. All the, and it was like revenge. Yeah. Sweetest revenge ever. So I was looking at his brother there lying on the ground. I wanted to put him lying on the ground. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. So, so that was an easy fight. And then I had other fights that were harder. But it never lost. But Was there was, was more fear going into them? Because there's, there's a lot of pride in them fights. Yeah. More than balance. Especially when they're representing the family. Yeah. Th- yeah. But, but you know, like... Uh, f- uh, do you know what the thing is? Boxing... Uh, boxing... Um, I was... I, uh, we all get nervous. Like... 
I, w- I was always nervous in boxing. The lads in the club used to think I was as cold as ice. They'd say, John never gets nervous. Yeah. And it wasn't that. It was, just it was, it was the bullying. Mm. I learned to control fear and, or to hide it. I was terrified, mm. you know. But boxing, I used to be terrified. And I'm going, what am I doing with myself? Why am I, That's every why, yeah. like, why am I doing like, Why am I putting myself under the stress? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I could be just at home uh, playing, playing my old Sega Mega Drive when I was a kid. <laughs> every you know what single mean? boxer you know what I mean? has like, the exact same Instead thoughts. of going in there in, in the lights in front of everybody yeah. and I could get killed in front of yeah, people. Yeah. Like, I just want to go home. If you're, you know what I mean? You're afraid. You do, you're afraid. Right? It's just plain and simple. But with the bare knuckle, it was, I had a different thing with it. You were afraid, but not as mad because for me, bare knuckle, you have a choice to lose. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. You so can you keep win. going until, you know, oh, shake hands, like, shake hands. Yeah, like, exactly. You can go forever, whereas, you know, if, unless you get knocked out in concerts. Yeah. But I mean, whereas boxing, someone could just have clash and bench, and yeah. I, I didn't want that. Yeah. Whereas bare knuckle, I go, I'm not losing unless I say I'm better. Uh, I'm not, okay, and okay, I was yeah, so yeah. confident in I have to die because I was so self destructive. Yeah. I didn't Before, care then. Yeah. So wasn't as nervous. Yeah, bare knuckle wasn't as nerve wracking, but but you need a lot of mental strength for it because you don't know when it's going to end, I and that's why a lot of fights are so boring. People, I see a lot of settled people texting underneath. No, this is shy for the. You don't understand. This don't look at it as boxing. It's not boxing. Mm. It doesn't have a time limit. Right, a fight can go on like I had a fight for an hour and five minutes. I had another fight for forty-five minutes. I had another fight for forty-two seconds. I had a brother Joe one day fought for an hour and fifty-five. My brother Paggy fought for three hours right afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, like you couldn't, people you don't wouldn't know even when walk for like, an hour like and like forty-five a, minutes. You don't like know when it's going to end. It's like a marathon and sprint with boxing. Yeah, and so you don't like if you go. Like I remember having a fight. The last fight I had, I won't say who he is. Don't want to bring that up. But probably fighting him again. <laughs> but, uh, but I remember, I remember, and I was overweight fighting him, and he was very fit, and he was an All Ireland champion as well. But um, I remember uh, hitting him, and uh, I dropped him, and uh, I wouldn't go for the kill, right? Because first of all, the space was so big; it wasn't a ring to get me. Mm. So I'd have to chase the gun down, and I was overweight. And I went, I just went the first few seconds for the kill. And you remember me? I used to always go for the kill. But you're fighting in a big place, lads, and you're going. If I don't. If I don't keep him down, I'm fucked then. I'm bollocksed. Yeah. So I went for the initially, and I went, and then I went, whew, felt myself get, and then I went, I just have to take the brakes off now again. I've got an R2R too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I ended up fucking, uh, whatever it went, the thing went 45 minutes or whatever. So you can't, you can't, yeah, you can't, you have to be very sure when you go, when you go yeah. for somebody. Is, is the Connors family, are they, are you a fighting family? No. No, the least fighting name among travellers is, is Connors's. Is it? The least. Mm. The absolute least. Uh, so, so everything falls to you, yeah. But, <laughs> no, but the anybody con- want to The Connors just would be known as businessmen. I uh, uh, yeah, businessmen basically, uh, money men, and we were the exact. Uh, we weren't businessmen. We weren't money men. We were fighters. But I'm half ward. Right. So I oh, grew up yeah. with the wards. Okay. But even my father's, my father and his brothers were the baldiest cunts ever and they were brought up in Darndale in the 80s and they were f- absolutely fearless. Mm. But they weren't boxers, they were dirty goers. Mm. You know what I mean? And grab your rest, yeah, yeah, bite yeah. noses off and shit, like madmen. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So we had that in us and then my grandfather, Paddy Ward, and then I have a lot of McCarthy in me. Like, you know I have more McCarthy in me than any other name. Fuck. Because my grandfather... That's yeah. why you can fight like fuck. They, <laughs> well, they were boxers. Yeah. I, so my, the McCarthy's were boxers. So my grandmother <laughs> was McCarthy on both sides. Yeah. And then my grandfather, Johnny Connors, is half McCarthy. So I have more McCarthy yeah. in the blood than any other yeah. blood, actually. Good breeding in you, so, Yeah, good breeding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cousin Tommy. Uh, that was black, black McCarthy's. Yeah. So you went from boxing, acting, doing yeah. the acting, all that shit. And then when did you start getting heavily into like being an activist and, and yeah. being more political and... Well, well uh, I'll answer that, uh, maybe I'll answer that like Michael Mex part uh, answer that like I was born a traveller, so, yeah, yeah. so I was born black, yeah. you know, yeah. it, that's the same kind of thing, uh, you are, I was always like that and it's in a camera just got put on me, so okay. like my grandmother was like one of the great activists and her sister Nan Joyce, my grandmother's Chrissy Dunhu uh, Ward, so growing up at a campsite, and listen to her stories and seeing her shackle herself to government buildings and my grandfather really? well, and do all that stuff. And then what happened was when I did Love Hate and Love Hate blew up and was really popular, they wouldn't even ask me an actor question. It was straight away, John, what about travel, rural crime? Yeah. What about this, what or that? So like I had no choice. Yeah. Now, I couldn't even talk about acting. So I had to constantly You're always descend. Him. And this is kind of the era before podcasting, like up until around, you know, this was 2013, 14, 15. Mm. Because why I say that is because you'd be on a radio station and it'd be like eight minutes and you've mm-hmm. eight minutes to defend every travel crime ever. Yes. You know what I mean? Whereas now I'm on a podcast, you there's no pressure. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So there was all that stuff. And again, that stuff did fucking got me angry again then. I was going, like, I can't even just be an actor now. I have to defend every traveler who ever lived. 
But just uh, got big support from it because yeah. even in 2017, I think it, the name they get, need to get rid. Named is one of the 50 incredible people that are shaping Ireland. Yeah, well, that's, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's pretty nice to be here. Not it's, it's yeah. you know what? It's like it's good and it shows you. You said like your ballsiness is in your fucking DNA. Yeah, when you're in the limelight and the camera's on you. People don't want to do anything because they don't want to fuck yeah. up the bag. They want to yeah. fucking yeah. make sure that they're not painted in the wrong light. But for you to say, no, fucking hell, what's happening? And you're wrong. Yeah, everyone and just did what you want. Me, me, me family begged me to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck travellers, leave travellers <laughs> off. Do your fucking career, make the money, go to Hollywood, Jimmy's a boy. You know what I mean? And even my grandmother, who's an activist, What's wrong with you? Yeah, live as a boy. <laughs> Will you make the money? What's wrong with you? Travellers and do nothing for you. Yeah. Fuck the travellers, so... Like I, I still, uh, you just couldn't, I couldn't like it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just, it's most, either most people in your situation, but we went, fuck, I ain't taking the money. Yeah. Oh. Well, I said to her, I said, well, you did it. You know what I mean? You're saying that to me now, but if it's in you, it's in me. Yeah. yeah. You, you know grew what up mean? around it. I grew up around it, so it's in the DNA, and it's there uh, from what I see in the environment. So I, I no choice no matter. Have to defend where you come from, and that doesn't mean we're angels either. But I mean, we don't have many representatives. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, um, you know, and it is like no matter what anybody says the most accepted discrimination in Ireland 100% I mean it's it mostly like it's embraced like if you look at even the studies don't ask travellers look at the UN studies the EU studies um, um, there was an EU study that came out that has shown that Irish travellers are the most discriminated people in Europe man so I mean it's and it's down to the fact we're white in that area why it's yeah. accepted because you don't like you wouldn't if you race against Tommy then you're a racist mm, yeah. do you know what I mean like and that's a dirty name and rightly so because racism is disgusting but if you're discriminating against travel it's not racist they're, sure they're white who cares yeah. so that's where they get away with it and I see the most liberal left wing progressive people being discriminated discriminatory towards travellers yep. and thinking it's grand but every other minority they model, model yeah, got they couldn't have, like even you're talking about the school, which is still friggin' blew my mind. That's crazy. We'll stick all the travellers in the one class of all different ages. Fucking, even like, <laughs> going, going to bars. Like, travellers getting refused. Clubs, bars, pubs, hotels, Christian gyms, parties. shopping centres. Even, uh, even, even certain boxing clubs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. People oh, yeah. Would join if they're oh that was typical. Like, where we, where we came from, there was loads of clubs that wouldn't let travellers in. Yeah. And then the one club that lets travellers in, Darndale, dominates for 10 years straight. And then Best club when you open the doors in, we're all in Do you know what I mean? Well, you don't want all Ireland champions, yeah. no? So, yeah, no, it's, it is accepted, man. And that's the thing. Like, I, what, I hope that it would have changed. I hope that... Like, my hope was that my nieces and nephews wouldn't have got that. And already, like, when they were five, I remember me, me little nephew Joseph, who's like a spitting image of me, he's like mini me. Like, he came up to me and asked me about knacker and what's knackers and stuff. And I went, ah, oh, fuck, it's just never going to change. Like, be just dead oh, and oh, stop, it really it broke my heart. Like, and he's half traveller and half settling. That's a whole other bag of tricks. Yeah. Is it still as bad as it was? No? I, I think it's the worst it's ever been. Really? Yeah, in terms of, I think one thing that doesn't help um, is this uh, travellers uh, the online stuff man you know like the feud and, and, and you know like it's, mm, it's, yeah. it's just out of control this traveller stuff online yeah. and that reinforces the feeling that people have look at them they're scum they're killing each other you know what I mean because maybe like even if it's 50 videos it's 50 videos or whatever that looks like it's every traveller ever lived yeah. but if you, you, know know what what I mean? if, you if you look at the videos now like Toro knows I no, love the call I love the call I am a call You could call me a culture vulture because yeah. I'm yeah. fucking all over. But you remember the one she did with the. It was, uh, but do you look, look at some of the comments, right? The you lads had on. the lads could the lads were only having the crack with yeah. you. And look at the knackers, look at them, look at them. and they're <laughs> the lads are boxers and look and they only have the laugh. They don't no, you I don't get that we were only uh, having yeah. the, that we I have a sense of humor. Everyone was having a laugh, and it was like the You know when we done that video. We, me, Polly. Sorry, for the people watching the podcast, yeah. there was a video that the lads in boxing done for, when was it? it, it was 2013, me, Polly Barnes, Sean McCormick, Mick, McCormick, Mick Conlon, called out the choices. Davey Alver the, was it? No, no Davey Alver filmed it. It was oh, Davey yeah. Alver and Johnny and Joe Ward were filming it. You called out Big Joe Joyce's family. called out his family and then they done a reply. But what happened, we went down to the gym that day to train and nobody went in. It was only us. And then it was, it was Joe and David went, go oh, make a video. And I went, like, no, we're not doing it because you'll put it on YouTube. We're like, no, we won't put it on YouTube. We're just going to send it, we're just gonna send it to my, my grandfather. We're going to let's go to Ireland. Let's be a swear. <laughs> That's good. Don't be doing it. I swear to fuck, we've done it 
five minutes later. So all over. It was all over. It was all over. The they world and all. And then and then we get pulled in for a meeting with, with fucking Billy Wilds and all. No, that was in the old days. This is because when when yeah. the Joyce is done their reply, Billy, Billy was great though. Billy Wilds. When 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 the when they done their reply. They're saying, we're coming up to the stadium, we're waiting. And then fucking they had, you see that hurt? If we didn't know more, box some leg at the hole. And fucking, everyone was fucking panicking. They're, they're all coming up to the stadium yeah, yeah. to start murder. They're like, oh, fuck's sake, lads, this is that's a joke. The lads are just great actors. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. And then, and then fucking we we'll get pulled in for a meeting. And that's, he said, listen, this is this is racist. They can't be doing this. He said, fuck's sake, it's a joke between yeah, mates. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't supposed to go online, but fucking Joe said it online. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was, was good. Crack. But I've, I've always no, been, but especially the growing up. They're harmless, the call-outs are harmless. Yeah. It's when uh, the feudal stuff. Oh, but uh, yeah, look, lads, even like I see the Watson. I get into them myself, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you do. But now I'm going, a lot of these, 90% of them never go ahead in a fight now. You're no, going, lads, no, no. They're just get the fuck. Because they're getting into the, the social media sphere. Yeah. And they're becoming famous, or, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, but there's cunts out there now they're becoming famous and they fucking never had a fight in their life. Like, fucking you know big, I mean? big David, he had in a pocket video. <laughs> Shite the bucket. It's, it's <laughs> 1.3 Rogan. million. Joe Rogan videos. talking about that. Did he? So Joe Rogan. Yeah, talk- yeah. Joe Rogan was mad in the travellers. Fuck And off. was talking about the shite in the bucket, that this and that, all that, like, fucking 1. hell. 1.3 like. million views. That's yeah. crazy. And it's, it's fucking, it's unbelievable. But I, I spent, especially when you get the not like what you were saying, we're integrating all different yeah. backgrounds. Boxing. And all, mm. when you're on a team, you're with travellers. Like he said, yeah. uh, because they're fucking most of the, the team are successful. Travelers. So Larry's team just travellers just yeah. become yeah. Belfast. And then, <laughs> yeah. It is though. It it is. Is. That, that, team, Belfast, that team we did. It was travellers it, it was just me and all Belfast. Remember? In, in, <laughs> and, and as was Anne. Was a as was Anne. He was a traveller. Yeah. That's all there was. That's like the best. Fell there in this out. Yeah. And fucking, I just... I just can't fax you, but it's still on. You are, you're, you've always been. Even because the lads ain't start, I remember I was there one day, and if, I think it was one of the Keenans, and they start talking, and they said something about the viewers, and I the said, And we still use that word, we still use They're speaking Kent, and I went, what the fuck's Kent? Oh, that's the traveller language today, and I started, you had to show me, it's all so blue, the face clock, and that's it. We're still saying, is there any viewers in there, or what? The man's looking at you. The man's looking at you. <laughs> What's yeah. the future for, for Johnny Connors yeah. looking like? What do you want? What do you want? What are you expecting? Uh, to get back in the ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tommy's here. Tommy, you ready? Know what? I would love an L. You know, uh, I had a charity fight last year. I give you a laugh. I had a charity fight last year. Fucking Steve O'Timothy. You know Steve O'Timothy? Yeah, yeah. He asked me to go on like the undercard uh, it was meant to be him and McGregor and then McGregor backed out and he was he fought Paddy Barnes he still did he come down to the gym yeah he fought uh, Paddy Barnes yeah. come down to the gym and then uh, I fought a comedian fella MC Dacent who makes a laugh at Travis but I've, in a very funny mm. way like very funny great accent he does but um uh, I fucking had I had 13 pints of Guinness before I went in and two whiskeys like, <laughs> like genuinely uh, and I went in there and I was like scuttling the boys but he was he was terrified going into the ring then and I was like oh he's terrified that's grand I was like and Andy Ricky Hatton was uh was the judge, but even just jumping in that little charity fight, I was like, buzz. yeah, but like, I wouldn't mind a few more charity fights. Yeah, yeah I was actually going to ask you, would you do you a charity fight? Anybody out there, let's do yeah. it. Um, <laughs> Start the call, it's big, if, you're su- if you're super fit, fuck off. <laughs> uh, actually, your man, Tom, Tom, Car- Thomas Carty, asked yeah. me, you know, Thomas Carty, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he asked me to do a charity fight before Christmas, in the midst of doing a film, and I'm trained and fucking God knows how long, but... Uh, it's in your back at us. Yeah, yeah, just literally yesterday. You're getting ready first? first uh, yeah, no, I'm thinking for sure. I'm thinking for sure. I would, like, I would like a few little charity fights this year, yeah. Uh, Acting-wise as well, I'm doing a film right now in Belfast, yeah. and this is like a big film, so it's nice to do something like this. I just did a film that I produced and played the lead, and that I think will be the best thing I've ever done. And then um, I've wrote, co-wrote, and directed a film called The Black Guelph, right. which won Oldenburg Film Festival in September, Germany. And that's going to Dublin International Film Festival now this month, and then it'll go to the cinema, and then yeah, like a lot of loads of and to be honest, lo- oh, lots yeah. of stuff this year is actually lined up to be really good for me, and it's like you know a lot of the seeds that I've sown already yeah, are now to... coming to fruition, like they're all grown now, and uh, like it was a rough couple of years with COVID for everybody, yeah. and then there was no making money, and and then you know I I met a film that Black Wealth on a low budget and took no no money for myself I actually put money into it and uh, so that was like a year and a half working on that for free like the editing not getting the paycheck but it was worth it because you know it was everything I wanted yeah. to say about Ireland and, and, and it was you know 
it's something I'm proud of. So yeah. it's like, yeah, you just you just keep rolling with the punches, lads. You know, yeah. like life is a fight. Life right, is the man. hardest fight. That's what I always say. Boxing's a great euphemism for, for life. life. Yeah, it really. It me and my brother Pac, you always talk about that. Like, like, and and I'm way more mentally strong now than I've ever been, just from trauma, overcoming it, fighting in life, thinking that you're doomed, thinking that I've done, I've made a mistake now that I'm not going to come back from because I've done things and things even politically or my associated with people and not even realised and mental health breakdowns and going, there's no coming back and you think I'm fucked now again, you know, and I'm in that dark place again and I was a couple of years ago, I was in that place again and then I came back from it again and you go, fuck me, life just presents these hurdles constantly. Yeah, yeah. You jump over them and you keep fucking going to the right to the end and until they fucking nail you down to the floorboards. Yeah, hundred well, percent. We've took it, talked enough shit. Yeah. So at the end of each podcast we play a wee game called Blank Smack bad, Smack or Bad, bad Dragon, Dragon Claw. Claw. This is the Dragon Claw Ball. So what's that? Dra- oh, do you know what? I forgot to, to say it. I got so excited when we were here. <laughs> the <laughs> we are in association with Dragon Claw Irish whiskey, it's fucking yep. top of the tops. It is fucking, it's the Beautiful. nicest whiskey ever. Is is. The goat. So, and if you're a whiskey drinker, you'll yeah, love it. You, you um, have to get right, so um, that's, that's the three. We're going to have three smack, people here. Blank or buy someone a dragon claw whiskey. We're going to do. So we're going to be three names Mungan. Yeah. Um, no, yes. do you mean smack as in give him a smack? Or no, yeah, smack give, him smack. give him a smack. <laughs> smack. <laughs> smack. <laughs> You're not in Dardale right now. No, it's a smack. <laughs> crack. Crack. Punch. Sorry, punch. Sorry, because I thought both of them were drugs. Because <laughs> <well. laughs> that's a drug. That, actually, my logic, my logic is more logical. Because that's a drug technically. And then yeah, the other two are drugs. Is. So anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> smack. Smack. Blank. Blank means a void. Just uh, ignore yeah. And a uh, bad dragon. Oh, okay. So, Mungan. Yeah. Who's all, who else have we got? Michael Mungan. So that's your first one. Me and Guy and uh, Love Hate, what do you call him? Nidge. Nidge. <laughs> Nidge. Davy Joyce. Or Davy Joyce. <laughs> we don't want to start any. <laughs> the Connors and the Joyce's would be all over. So I got a smack one. Well, I give, I'll buy Davy a drink. Right. right. <laughs> me, and Dave, me and Davy ain't fall out, right? <laughs> uh, and I'll, uh, I'll avoid Tom because. And, and the reason why I wouldn't buy Tom a drink because Tom doesn't drink. Mm. Right. Tom Von Lawler plays Nidge. And I love Tom. So let's say we'll avoid him. Smack Mungan. I'm just giving him. And I'm going to smack Michael Mungan because he shouldn't have given up boxing. <laughs> yeah, well, he shouldn't have. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But thanks for coming. Yeah. You're a legend. Thanks, Tom. Here over one of ours. Yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in, people. Like and subscribe and share. And we'll see you next week. And before you go, yeah. we're going to do a quick Patreon. So, so if you want to get that bonus footage with the one and only Johnny Connors, we're here. We're going to do a quick yep. wee quiz. And the link for the Peter will be below this video. Go on, subscribe. It's two pound a month. Get your. What about off. your live show? Is that new? What how's that? Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 get the live show tickets. Yeah, 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 I'm, 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 I'm gonna be there. Get the live show tickets. We'll have the crack. Yeah. So ten pound a ticket. You know. The the links are in my uh, link tree, which is all mine. Is that all? It's only ten pound. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fucking cheap. Fuck's sake! Get your fucking tickets. Get your one paint. That's fucking cheap. Fuck's sake! But anyway, thanks for joining. You're the legends. See you next week.